Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. I'm starting a new format of filming, a review of different manufacturing companies in the market of translucent structures. And today we came to visit the representative office of Rainers, one of the leaders and the largest supplier of aluminum systems in the world. I will show what systems they have, it will be very interesting, be sure to watch the video to the end, let's go. We are located in the Rainer's showroom and office. Any one of you can also come here, see the systems in full size, and get expert advice if needed. We are in the showroom. Here we have both small samples, quarters in section, and full-scale large samples of structures. We'll start with windows and doors. I'll tell you about them now. The most interesting part will be at the end, exclusive systems. Let's start. Rainers used to have CS77 and CS86 window systems. Now they have been replaced by new systems which are Masterline 8 and Masterline 10. Now I'm going to tell you about the Masterline 8 system. It is shown here in three designs. It's a standard design called Functional. It's straight on the outside. This design is called Deco with these beveled edges. This design is called Renaissance, it has this kind of ripped structure. So, these are design solutions that have nothing to do with the heat transfer resistance of the structure. But in heat engineering, there are three solutions as well. It's standard, high and high plus. These samples are made in the high solution. The standard solution is when you have this middle thermal bridge, a smaller middle seal, and no foam here, the so-called rebate seal, that's the standard solution. The high solution has a larger metal seal, it's warmer and there's a rebate seal. And in the high plus solution, the thermal bridge is replaced by another material, which has a lower thermal conductivity coefficient. These are very complex terms, many people get confused. The thermal conductivity coefficient is the coefficient of some material, that is, aluminum has this coefficient and this material has it as well. By the way, it's called glass-filled polyamide. Well, rubber has some coefficient of thermal conductivity, but the whole structure, according to European standards, is called heat transfer coefficient. And there are standards where it has the opposite value, it's called the resistance of heat transfer. So in Europe, the less the heat transfer coefficient, the better. And our resistance has the opposite value. The higher it is, the better. This is a complex indicator, which is determined by the results of laboratory tests, when the structure is fully tested with a glass unit, and the heat transfer resistance index is obtained. It can vary depending on combinations of technical solutions for the profile, 
also depending on combinations of glass units, used glass and so on. So in this system, the size of the thermal bridge, this black polyamide material here, is 40 mm wide. So why the aluminum structure is warm? These are the basic things. I have already talked about them. It's an aluminum profile, outer part, aluminum profile, inner part, connected with each other with a polyamide thermal bridge, which ensures that the cold does not pass from the outside into the room, thus the structure is considered warm. So the bigger this thermal bridge is, the wider, the deeper, the warmer the construction is. This is a 40 mm bridge. Other systems have a 24 mm bridge, and there is a 34 mm bridge. Alutech 62 series is 24, 72 series is 34, and here it's 40 mm. This high system is even warmer than the 72 series of Alutech, and high plus is much better. And a very important point, people don't understand why, for example, the European Rainer system, Belgium, why it is much more expensive than other systems and no one can explain it. I will now try to tell you exactly what the differences are. First, it is metal intensity. The Europeans have no desire to make it cheaper by reducing the walls of the profile. So their profile has thicker walls, it is stronger and more durable. But other manufacturers are constantly trying to make it cheaper by thinning the wall. Next, the important point is the thermal bridge. European systems use the thermal bridge of Technoform Baltic company. It is a German company, very high quality thermal bridges. I already mentioned the material, glass filled polyamide. Some manufacturers use the same thermal bridges of the same company, but a different shape. And some use other thermal bridges of lesser quality. Sometimes even other material like some PVC and so on. All this, of course, worsens the quality of the construction, but it also makes it cheaper. Seals also greatly affect the price. There are two types of seals in translucent structures. They are EPDM, ethylene propylene rubber, and TEP, thermoelastic polymer. So EPDM is considered to be a better material. It is more durable and it withstands lower temperatures. TEP, as many believe, hardens in the cold, loses its properties, and thus the design deteriorates, the tightness gets worse, and so on. Basically, I think I agree with many that EPDM seals are much better quality and longer lasting. So I recommend everyone use EPDM. Rainer's seals are all EPDM. Many other manufacturers use TEP seals and thus reduce the cost of construction. So, they save on seals, thermal bridges, well, and many other things that manufacturers save on. The next thermal system, a class higher, is the Masterline 10 system. Here is a sample. How is it different from Masterline 8? Here the aluminum is the same, but the thermal bridge is increased. Here it is 40 mm. And in Masterline 10, it is 60 mm deep. There are no analogs of such systems on the market. Only European systems can boast of such thermal bridges. This window will be very warm, no worse than PVC, the best PVC window. It will be no worse in terms of characteristics than this. There is also a large seal in the middle, rebate seal. In this system, it can be basically I will show you how it looks like in comparison with Masterline 8. Basically, you can see that this is Masterline 8 with a 40 mm thermal bridge and here is Masterline 10 with a 60 mm thermal bridge. It's a much warmer window. It is super warm. That one will be warm, but this one even warmer. This sample has regular hinges on it, not hidden. I want to show you how they differ from hidden ones. Firstly, they do not look very nice. And secondly, if we open the sample, we can see that on the sash, in the place where the hinge is installed, the seal is cut. Here you can see how it's trimmed, and thus worsens the sealing contour. And in this place a gap can form. 
so I recommend to avoid using ordinary hinges at all. I suggest using only hidden ones, and I use hidden hinges on all my sites. The next system that I want to show you is Sensity Aluminum Wood. It's a regular window system that has a wood lining on the inside. It's Italian wood lining. Very high quality. It doesn't dry up and insects also can't get inside. There is a special impregnation and here, as you can see, are only hidden hinges in order not to spoil the wood with ordinary hinges so as not to drill or cut it. Only hidden hinges are put on the Sensity system. This is what it looks like. Very nice, smooth wood on the inside. Another system I wanted to talk about is called the Slimline 38. It's invented for those who want minimum aluminum and maximum glass. I mean, it's thinner. Here's what it looks like. It's lower in height, meaning it has a smaller visible part of the profile. I want to put it next to the Masterline 8 system, for example, so that you can clearly see the difference. So you can see that this one is much lower in height than that one by about 35 millimeters. This system is used very often. It is certainly not the most popular but for design solutions, it's very interesting. So we have talked about windows. Let's talk about doors. Here's a sample of a door. Well, a door is basically no different from a window, only that the window has perimeter locking fittings and it is airtight, while the door is not as airtight as the window. It has no perimeter locking, unless of course it's a balcony door. On this sample, I just wanted to show you what a roller hinge looks like. So, that's a roller hinge. Ordinary hinges are big. They are placed on top of the overlay, like in stores. Not very nice. This is a roller hinge and it's not so bad. There are also hidden hinges. They are not visible. They are completely milled and installed inside the profile. So, we are done with the windows. We will not go into some very technical aspects, otherwise the video will stretch for hours. I've said what I wanted to say, and now I want to talk about facades. These are mullion transom systems, large panoramic windows, and so on. Raiders has a mullion transom system called CW50. What is the principle? So, the most basic thing you need to understand is that in a mullion transom system, the insulating glass units are installed outside the room, while in windows, they are installed inside the room. So, large structures, very large openings, very large heavy glass units are always made of a mullion transom system, because a large glass unit can be installed from the outside with a manipulator, with a suction cup. I will have separate videos on this from my sites, where we will be installing large glass units of this kind. What's the principle of this system, the most basic things? The vertical element is the mullion, here it is from the inside, it is the mullion. The horizontal element is called the transom, the visible width is 50 mm, both the mullion and the transom. From the inside 50 mm, from the outside 50 mm, such strips of 50 mm, in which the glass units are already inserted. Windows and doors are inserted in this system, so it serves as a kind of fray. The mullion has different sizes and depth. It is determined by the designer on the basis of wind load calculations. The transom is also determined in depth based on the calculation of wind loads and the weight of the infill. Various stiffeners and other elements can be inserted here. The mullion here is about 100 mm, but it can go up to 300 mm, a very large, powerful mullion. If it's, well, the mullion size and depth is very much influenced by the pitch of the mullions and the attachment points. The greater the mullion spacing and the higher the mullion attachment points, the greater its depth so that it can withstand all loads. So, the mullion and the transom are connected on the usual joints at the site. 
then the thermal bridge is installed. Basically, this thermal bridge provides thermal insulation. They used to be plastic, now they use foam thermal bridges in most systems, both radars and other normal systems. If you want to get a normal warm construction, it is better to put a foam thermal bridge. Yes, it's a little more expensive, but it's much warmer. Special support pads are placed here, the glass unit is installed on them, and after its installation, it is clamped with a clamping bar. Self-tapping screws are screwed in here, and then this clamping bar is closed with a decorative cover. It is snapped on top. That's basically it, a very simple system and easy to understand. This is a standard version, that is, external clamping bars, non-structural, standard version. The next system I want to show you is the CW50SL, also called Slimline. It is the same mullion transom system, but its mullions and transoms are thinner, more accurate, not so massive. That is, they are very thin from the inside, 15 mm strips. You can also use such a system, it's called Slimline. But from the outside, it looks the same as the regular one, 50 mm. The only difference is on the inside, it's thinner. The next system is CW50SE, the so-called structural system, which has the same principle as the average mullion transom system. There are mullions, transoms all the same, the frame is attached to the opening, but here we don't see the exterior aluminum elements. The glass units are fixed with such special fixings. A U-shaped aluminum profile is installed inside the glass unit. And with special fasteners, the glass unit is attached to the inner glass and pressed against the mullion and the transom. Then the thermal bridge is installed and the joint between the glass units is sealed with a special structural sealant. From the inside, of course, it doesn't look so good. I mean, from the outside. But from the outside, if you approach from afar, we can see the effect of a solid wall, that is, without any aluminum slats, it will be a completely glass construction. It's more expensive than the usual mullion transom system because the increase in price is mainly due to glass units. Structural glass units are more expensive to produce than regular ones. This is another version of the mullion transom system from the Sensity line. I have already talked about aluminum wood windows and wood overlays on these windows. Do not confuse with wood aluminum windows. Aluminum wood are aluminum windows with wood overlays and wood aluminum is the opposite, wood windows with aluminum overlays. So this is the aluminum wood system. The principle of it is that it has also mullions and transoms but wooden overlays are installed on the mullions and transoms from the inside. You can see them here. So it is possible to make both an aluminum wood mullion transom system and integrate an aluminum wood window into it. And from the inside, it will completely look like a wooden structure. But at the same time, it will have all the advantages of aluminum structures. This system is exclusive, it's the so-called element facade or modular facade. But it is not applied to private buildings at all. It is applied to large skyscrapers, large buildings, complex-shaped buildings. A lot of large high-rise buildings are built with these systems. The principle is that the module is assembled in production. That is, you can see that here the bottom part is one module, the top part is the second module, which are connected to each other with these rubber elements. That is, this module is assembled in production in the form of a large element with a floor height. A glass unit is installed in it. It is fixed and this element in the assembled form, glazed, is taken to the site. Brackets are fixed on the floor slab in advance at the site. And this element is placed onto these brackets with a crane. The elements are connected to each other, so we get a very fast installation. Yes, the load is bigger on the production of such structures, but the installation is very fast. And the advantage is that on large high-rise buildings, there is no need to install scaffolding. People are inside the room, the crane moves these modules, they fix them, 
connect them to each other, and it's all very quick and easy. In addition to samples, such corners and section, in this showroom you can see more samples in full size, real windows. We'll run through them quickly now. The first window is an example of a balcony door where the glazing goes into the floor. There are concealed hinges as you can see. Also, there is an ordinary handle. Now we'll open this construction and here is a sample of a French balcony. It is also a Raiders profile. Special elements are screwed on the outside and the triplex glass is clamped into them. And we get a good glass railing. You may order it and use it too. Here's another regular window, Master Line 8 system. Also concealed hinges like on the balcony door. It's a tilt and turn window. It all works fine. The next design shown here is the Sensity system that I talked about in the samples. These are Italian wood overlays, also concealed hinges, so as not to spoil the wood. And here, on this window, you can also see the purity handle. It's a separate topic. It's a designer handle, designed especially for Raiders by an Italian designer. It's all stainless steel. It has about 10 different color options. Bronze, silver, gold, and it has a really neat little fixing point to the sash. Very nice looking, very pleasant to the touch. So you can order such handles too, if you like it. This is also a small sample of a casement window. There is a working sash. And there is another sash which, there is a little lever, you turn it, and the sash opens. And we close it. This is a folding system, CF77 Rainers, from wall to wall. I mean, it all folds up. I'm going to show you now how it all works. This is a special system developed by Rainers specifically for folding doors. There are special profiles, seals, fittings, rollers and so on. There are such systems on the market, but not everywhere they are presented. Some manufacturers do not have such systems. Only European manufacturers can boast of such systems. But on the market there is an analog of folding systems. It's made of a window profile. Any window profile. Whether it's Alutec or Rainers, it doesn't matter. And fittings for folding systems are installed on it. The fittings can be from different manufacturers too, it doesn't matter. For example, there is one called Rotafold. It's an overlay fitting. And people don't understand the difference between Rainers folding systems and folding systems made with these cheap fittings. I'll try to explain it to you now. Folding systems made with Rotafold fittings from the window profile have a guide at the bottom and top. That is, it is attached here on the sash, on the frame. You can see it all, the guide profiles. Of course, it is covered by some casings, but it's still visible. But you don't see any guides here, right? Because here the lower frame and the upper frame act as guides, where the rollers are installed. Also, the key difference is in the hinges. Here we see a neat little hinge, thin and nice. It has a mount on the inside between the profiles. There is a mount that holds it in place. In the fittings which are on the window profile, Rotafold, the hinge is attached on top of the profile, screwed with self-tapping screws. There are a lot of them and it looks ugly. And furthermore, these fittings and this system can be made with a sash height of up to 3 meters. And the fittings based on the window profile, Rotafold, there is a maximum height of 2.5 meters. That is, you can't make it higher. And all this, well, you can basically take a closer look and you'll see that such a folding system looks much better. 
Next, I'll tell you about the door. That is, a folding system can have a door. If, for example, this folding system is used, you have to walk through it in order not to fold it every time. One sash, usually on the edge, is made as a door. There is a handle set, a lock. We open it like an average door and we can go through it, go out and close it. I mean, it's a standard regular door. You can make a window instead of a door. In that case, there will be no lock and no handle on both sides. There will just be a regular window handle and this construction will act as a window. That is, you can't open it from the outside, but from the inside, you can turn the handle and open it. So, if we go around to the back now, I'll show it to you in more detail. Here, as you can see, the bottom guide is sunk completely into the floor. This is an option for interior folding systems, that is, it's not a warm system. There are gaps at the bottom, but there is an option with a proper threshold and everything is pressed there and this roller is connected to the hinge. So it's a single element with the hinge. You can see this roller. It's inside, riding on the frame. And this system is much better in my opinion. Now I'll show you how it all folds up. So we open this sash. There are small handles, very small and neat. You can see them. They are usually painted in the color of the profile. These handles activate the hooks and fitting rods, which are in the sash. All this is necessary to ensure that there is locking around the perimeter and that there was no blowing and freezing. That is, we turn the handle, the hooks come out, and we open it, and we start pulling it. We pull one section, then you have to come up and do the same with the second handle, and slowly push. This way it all falls easily. I use almost no effort at all. Open the last handle and push the sashes open. This is what it looks like when folded. Then we start in the same way. Oh, I mean unfold it. In the same way we begin to fold it. It is desirable to make these folding systems with an odd number of sashes. I say this from experience. Because when there is an odd number of sashes, we have the support of the last sash on the roller. That is, for example, imagine there are three sashes. Here's an attachment to the frame on the hinge. Here we don't have any support. That is, they hang. And between the second and third sash, we have a roller, which rests on the frame, and thus, three sash or five sash designs are more reliable. They do not sag. While two sash or four sash designs have the last two sashes hanging on the hinges. And if the sashes are very wide, there is a risk that they will eventually start to sag. There are, of course, small disadvantages as well. It's these weak spots where the sashes meet the frame, right here. Of course, there are special plugs, seals, and so on, but this place is very weak and it can let through sometimes. And therefore, these folding systems, if, for example, we consider it as an exit to the terrace, if it's a living space where children play on the floor and so on, it's better not to use folding systems. I would recommend to put a lift and slide system because it's more reliable in terms of thermal engineering, wind protection and so on. There will be no blowing. Here we have those risks and therefore, it is better to put this system in case of some kind of veranda, that is, a common room, exit to the terrace, or it can be a summer house, or it can be a partition inside the room. 
that is, rooms without increased requirements for the heat transfer resistance of the structure. Here's a sample of the CP155, which is a sliding system. And there's the CP155LS, which is a lift and slide system. The difference is that the LS system has seals at the bottom and they are pressed against the bottom frame. We get an airtight connection that doesn't let through or freeze. If it's not LS, just sliding, it has felt brushes on the bottom. It doesn't have the twist of the handle and the raising and lowering of the rollers, it just rolls. So if you want to get a warm structure, then order the CP155LS lift and slide system. So I want to tell you the difference between the lift and slide designs and the tilt and slide designs that are on the market. A lot of people don't understand the difference. Tilt and slide designs are essentially a window profile meaning they are windows that have sliding fittings put into the overlay. These fittings can be a Sigenia or Rada patio, for example. What are the pros and cons? A tilt and slide construction has one sash and on the right or left side there is a dumb part and the sash slides behind the dumb part. We pull it towards us, we turn it sideways and there are guys screwed to the bottom and top directly to the profile. You can see them. There is a casing. It's ugly. But here we don't see these guide casings, because the lift and slide construction is a system in which the guides are the bottom frame and the top frame itself. Here we see an interior version that is small thin guides on which the sashes ride, but in the warm version there is a proper frame, two or three rails sealed on which the sash rides. The principle is that it goes up and down. Here we see a small handle. It's also an interior version. But in the warm version, here we have a long handle and when you turn it, the sash rises and thereby rides along the rollers. When you put the handle down, the sash goes down, pressed against the bottom frame with the seals. So nothing freezes or leaks. It's very comfortable. Much more comfortable than the tilt and slide ones, which require more movements. And another advantage is that the lift and slide system can be made for example with two sashes driving one behind the other, or on a three rail frame can be made two sashes driving behind the third, that is, a lot of different opening options and we can make a larger opening. And these designs can also be made higher and with larger sash dimensions than tilt and slide designs. These designs can be made up to 3 meters high. Now I'll show you how it all moves. Here is an example of a version where a niche is made in the wall and the sashes drive into this niche. That is, we get a completely free room. The sashes drive into the niche. They fold up the same way. And this is a complete sample. The system is very exclusive. It's called Highfinity. It has a number of very cool advantages. The main advantage is that, as you can see, the glazing is all the way to the floor, which means that there is no sash profile and the wall is completely glass. The bottom guide is recessed into the floor and the bottom guide has a built-in automation that allows the automatic sliding of these sashes. This system can also be made very large. That is, there is experience of making a 6 meter sliding system in Spain. It can support more weight. It looks better. There is less profile. The vertical elements are very thin. Not like another lift and slide structures. Now I'll show you how it works. There is a handle like this. So, there is a manual opening option and there is an automatic option. I've got the remote in my hand. I'm going to activate it and show you how it moves. So we press it. 
and it goes. Well, if it's manual opening, we just push it. If it's automatic opening, then it goes by itself. And the advantage is that now you'll see simultaneously with this sash, the second sash will begin to move as well. Here, they go in parallel. It's convenient that as it closes itself, besides the remote, you can even do it from your phone, from an iPad. All this can be connected to a smart home, remote control, and so on. But there are, of course, certain disadvantages. You see, there are recesses here, in the bottom frame. And if we do a completely flat floor, inside and outside, and the frame is completely recessed, I mean, we get a flat surface, then these recesses are not going anywhere. The sash rides in them, so they need to be cleaned, looked after, so that there is no dirt, leaves, that is, uh, this system requires a certain amount of care. But what we get is a panoramic view, no aluminum, a large glass unit from floor to ceiling. I think it can hold up to 700 kilograms. Now I'll show you how to visualize the designs right on the house without leaving the showroom. So it's a 3D model of the cottage where you can look at the systems. You can see how they open and so on. This is a mullion truss and facade system. Here, for example, is the exit to the terrace. You can select a slider. This is the 155 series. Here is a monorail, two rail. It opens, it moves. You can see the three rail system, how it will be sliding. You can select a 4 sash design. You can also put high affinity. You see, it has less profile and more panoramic view. That's how it moves. You can put a folding system. That's how it folds. I mean, you can see it all at once. You can choose regular doors, swing doors. You can choose the so-called pivot doors. They have an axis on the top and bottom, so they can be made very large. Also, here you can choose windows, spin the cottage, choose windows, systems, see how they open, tilt, different kinds of design, renaissance, deco. You can change the color of the design choose different options and you can twist like this select systems see how they will look like how they work and so on we talked about the main radar systems showed how they look like the company has many products and technical solutions but we can't show them all in one video if you like this format write in the comments which company we should visit next if you have any questions, I will leave my contacts in the description. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye everybody!